giving Legolas vibes. I like it. I like it. Hey, welcome to Not Sorry, Love Lori. My name is Lori, and today we're going to be talking about borderline personality disorder, which I have, and friendships, and why it is so hard for me to have friendships. We're going to talk about it, but first, don't forget to subscribe and like this video and leave me a comment either before or after or during. What are you thinking? I want to know what you guys are thinking. So let me know. Also follow me on TikTok. It's not sorry, love Lori, my name um, that I use for everything. So check it out. I do stream um, almost every day. All right, so let's talk about friends. Cause the thing is I have an easy time generally making friends, but not keeping them. I have borderline personality disorder. I've been diagnosed by multiple doctors. It's something that often comes along with unstable and chaotic relationships. Not everybody with BPD is the same, but it often is common for there to be relationship challenges. In this specific instance, I'm talking about friendships. So I did do a video where I talked about borderline personality disorder, uh, romantic relationships and how it has affected mine. So check that out if you're interested in that. But I wanna get into fear of abandonment. And that usually is sort of like the main core fear of people with BPD. I know it's definitely mine. The reason is that as a young child, based on how I grew up, my attachment styles with my parents, for whatever reason, whether it's true or just something that is perceived, regardless, the child is experiencing that when they are themselves or ask for their needs directly, people will abandon us. So for example, my biological father, I dealt with abandonment. Like, I mean, my the divorce between my parents happened when I was two months old. So the abandonment started really young, especially because he was not an active parent. So the core belief for a lot of us with BPD is that we are unlovable. So going back to that, um, I rejected my true self. Because again, the belief is people are going to leave. So authentic Lori, the Lori that you see here right now, I rejected as, at a young age. I was always variations of me like because again i didn't know me i didn't know my likes or dislikes my ethics and morals back then i i rejected this part of me and so it wasn't really like malicious that i was like trying to be somebody else and like fool everybody it was just genuinely like i'm unlovable and therefore i you know i'm just i'm gonna sort of adapt to other people and hopefully they'll love me so as a kid something that really contributed to now and back then having unstable and chaotic friendships was that ultimately i was never taught healthy communication skills like conflict resolution, especially emotional regulation. So how to self soothe, healthy boundaries, and just overall healthy coping skills. All of those things really definitely would contribute to my friendships because those kinds of things carry over into those parts of our life. So some things that I would do is unconsciously mirror my personality to other people and kind of reflect back what they were showing me in terms of, you know, their personality. And I'd be like, yeah, cool. Cool. And um, I, again, like I, I just wanted to be liked, you know, we would, I would sort of mold myself to somebody that I would think that they would want to be friends with. But the thing is, ultimately, things would end up very out of control. And it's because, again, I don't have the ability to really have healthy relationships with people, never learned it. So in addition to mirroring, a, a big part of that is people pleasing. It's that like, I don't want people to be mad at me or think I'm unlovable. Again, my fear is of being unlovable and I'm very, very, very needing to be seen uh, and given attention by other people because again, like I was kind of felt starved of that as a child. And this is me taking responsibility in adulthood and saying, these are the things that have happened. I don't have to have those things be that way in the future, but I need to kind of accept it. And the only way for me to do that, to, to move on and hopefully make changes in the future in my behavior is to accept accept and validate myself and show myself some compassion because shame and guilt does not help anybody. <laughs> Woo. 
So another thing with BPD is that our emotions are very, very intense, even more so than the average person for a lot of us. And so it's very difficult for us to sort of de-escalate and manage my emotions in healthy ways. So unfortunately, sometimes I would take it out on other people and people don't deserve that. And you know, I don't deserve to be treated badly either. I'm learning. And people with BPD, it may seem like we're overreacting. The thing is that we're actually experiencing that emotion very, very, very intensely and we don't know what to do with it and how to get out of it. And sometimes if it's, you know, frustration or, or um, yeah, like anger, things like that, it can feel really hard for me to control. But again, awareness, validation, accepting myself, my past has really made it helpful for me to make some changes in the future. So I also get really paranoid about what other people think of me. So I'm worried that they secretly don't like me or they're, you know, disrespecting me, whether or not they're giving off cues of oh, I don't like this person. Like I may be picking things up that are that they're not intentionally trying to indicate to me and that they may not actually mean. Like I may, you know, take something really personally and think, oh my God, they hate me. And it's just like, no, they were just saying like that they disagree with something that I said, which isn't the be all end all, you know? But my brain goes into panic mode a lot of the time. And what happens is that my brain is really trying to protect me from abandonment. So if I feel that I'm, that the other person doesn't want to be my friend, they don't want to talk to me, they think I'm annoying, my brain will basically flip. So that's part of BPD is having extreme thoughts and, and my unconscious reaction to that. So I'm not even trying to do this. My brain does this is it goes, okay, they're going to abandon me at some point. So I need to get out. And so my brain will do this very unhealthy thinking pattern where I, it's called black and white thinking where it's all all or nothing good bad love hate and we can do that with people ourselves where it's like I'm either all good or I'm either all bad it's hard for me to hold space for the gray in between you know and same with other people when I are friends with them I will sometimes put them on such a pedestal and be like I love this person and then one thing that is like I don't know, I don't agree with that, or, you know, I've done something, and ghosting, that is something that's really a big um, part of that, and it's influenced, for me, it's influenced by my black and white thinking, which is, all of a sudden, it's no longer love, it's hate, and the thing is, it's not intentional, it genuinely is how my brain responds, and if I'm not conscious of it, it will continue to happen, like, as a repetitive pattern. And I mentioned ghosting is something that, for me, has been very common in my friendships, and there are many reasons why that can happen. I'm actually going to do a video about that and ghosting and the different reasons, at least why I've done it. It's not necessarily a BPD thing, but any anybody can ghost people, anybody, right? But it is something that I can say is part of what affects my relationships and my friendships because my brain will go into self-preserval mode, which is get away before they abandon you because abandonment hurts so much. So I will abandon them first, basically. And it's it's... The shitty thing is it's not malicious. It's that I don't recognize that my brain is doing this on autopilot. And a lot of the time, our brain is really just, it's doing what kind of kept us safe as a child and it's doing it in adulthood because I have the same brain, right? I'm, I mean, I'm growing up, but the thing is I have a lot of the same coping mechanisms and it can be really hard to change those. And ghosting is part of self-sabotage. A lot of my relationships I will, because I believe that they're going to end at some point, I will engage in behaviors that ultimately bring me closer to that, I think faster than it would have if I, didn't believe those things. So or if I wasn't doing those things. So for example, I may think that, you know, that friend doesn't like me or that they think I'm annoying. So part of me will almost like test them, not consciously though. That's the thing. Ooh, the sun is doing its thing right now. Okay. Slay. There have been times even in the past for me, this isn't just something that people with BPD do. Anybody can do this, but it could be the case and it was for me where I would threaten, you know, unaliving or, or SH, you know, turning on myself in relationships as a way to almost see if they will love me still and how to, how to get their attention because I feel like maybe they're not hearing me. So I don't know or didn't know, listen, no shame. If we don't know, we don't know. But again, as we grow up, it's up to us to really take some responsibility and accountability 
to take ownership of what we've done and recognize that we're still lovable and we're still deserving of recovery and healing or whatever it is that you know helps you to feel better in your skin because we're all deserving of good things we don't deserve to like rot in this horrible you know guilt and shame spiral it uh, ultimately it doesn't even create change anyways guys i'm in the sunshine i'm gonna leave it here <laughs> Um, but stick around, subscribe, like leave a comment. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok. Hope you guys learned something or related to something. Let me know down below and I will talk to you guys in my next video or on TikTok. Love you.